charge thee, this is Paul talking to Timothy, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead that is appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. And if there's ever been a day that we need preaching, it's today. Can somebody say amen there? Amen. Be instant in season, out of season. That means when you feel like it and when you don't. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. Two-thirds of preaching is reproving and rebuking. One-third exhorting. And I love all three, and I need all three, but I need more correction than I do need exhorting sometimes. He says, with all on suffering and doctrine. Verse 3, here's why. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. In other words, they don't want to hear the truth, but after their own lust, shall they eat to themselves, watch this, teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I want to use verse 7, and I'm going to preach a message on being faithful to the finish. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Some of y'all don't know, but 19 years ago tomorrow is my spiritual birthday. About 8 o'clock tomorrow night, 19 years ago on a Thursday night, 5144 Farmer Denton Road, God gloriously saved this preacher. And I remember that night he also saved Mark Ewan. Got him a little bit before he did me. But I was born again into the family of God that night. I've never gotten over it. I've never been the same. I haven't been perfect, but I've always knew I was forgiven. There's never been hardly a day in my life that I can't re just be blown away with the fact that I'm going to heaven one day. Amen. And go deep down in my heart and in my soul. I started out as a Sunday school teacher at Gravel Hill Baptist Church on fire for God. And then all of a sudden God called me to preach. And I started out and been tried to be faithful ever since. I haven't been faithful in everything, but he sure has been faithful to me. There's been times I've let him down, but he ain't never let me down. And it's not so much about how you start as it is about how you finish. You might start good, and that's all well and fine, but I don't want to start a blazing trail and enter it up a little trickling flicker. I want to start out right, and I want to finish right. I want to go out with the same testimony I come out with. If a man can go out right, that's a whole lot to be said. I know everybody ain't going to love me. Everybody ain't going to love you. You ain't going to be everybody's best friend. And you ain't going to please everybody. And neither can I. But if there's one person I want to please in my life, that is God himself. And as long as God is pleased with me and pleased with you, what, much, what else matters in your life? I want to finish just as faithful as when I started. Paul was telling us that he finished his fight, his course. He fought the good fight. What does it mean to be faithful? I was thinking this morning, to be faithful means to be trustworthy. To be faithful means to be responsible. To be faithful means to be dependable. To be faithful means to be engaged. To be faithful means to be involved. To be faithful means to have the right focus. To be faithful means you realize there is a cause. To be faithful means something has happened in your life and God has made a difference. To be faithful means you've had to say no to the flesh and yes to the spirit. To be faithful means you have said no to the devil and temptation and tried your best to say yes to God. The attributes and characteristics of a faithful person is one who is a giver, not a taker. Who is one who is engaged, not disengaged. One who is excited, maybe not all the time, but you're going to be excited about what God is doing. To be faithful means that you have an understanding that God can, God will, and God does. I don't know about you, but I want to be faithful to my finish. I want to be trustworthy. 
character. I want to be dependable. I want to have a good testimony. I want to keep my character right. I don't want to get blown up and be known as a gossiper and a backbiter and a tattler and somebody that quit on God and grew cold along the way. I want to be known as a preacher that tried his best, though he had faults and failures, to hang in there with God. Stay true to the King James Bible. Lifted up the blood stained banner. says I fought a good fight, I finished my course, means that there's going to be a day when you can do no more for God. There's coming a time when you will have no more effort. The end of your life will come. Paul was getting to the end of his life and a lot of time it's in our older years where we feel like we can't be as faithful as we used to could be. Might I say, Paul was faithful unto the finish. He said I fought a good fight. Let me give you three things. Number one, I want us to notice the reason for being faithful. Why was Paul faithful? Why did Paul say I fought a good fight? Why did Paul say I've kept the faith? What was it that motivated Paul to be so faithful? What is it that motivates you and I? There's some of y'all in here, man, you're faithful as bed bugs. Some of you that ain't even members, you're faithful, every service. It don't matter if it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night. You're going to be here and you're glad to be here. Thank you for your faithfulness. It's good to see the house of God usually full. That's why we're meeting out here for a time. This ain't permanent. So don't get your feathers ruffled. We're just trying some things. Making room for more visitors if they want to come. And yes, Sunday school will be back one of these days. Or not before long. And some of you teachers, you're in break and that you've enjoyed for the summer is about to be over. And I know you're excited. But listen, friend, being faithful is a purpose that we all ought to have in our life. What is it that drives a Sunday school teacher or a preacher or a choir director or a piano player to be faithful every service? Why well, don't everybody quit? Some does quit. Some throws in the towel. Some goes the other way. Well, why don't everybody quit? Why is there always a remnant? That is stay in there and fought that good fight. Why is there always a few? You can't put a finger on. You can't run them off. You can't talk them out of it. You can't beat them away. You can't preach too hard, too loud, or too long. Go ahead, you can't get too happy and you can't get too loud. You can't say your own thing. There is nothing you can do to run them off. Why is it that some people are just going to be faithful? I'll tell you why it is. The same reason Paul had been faithful. The number one reason why Paul had been faithful is because God had been faithful. He said many times in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 9, he says this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 9. Listen to what Paul says. He says here, he says, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In chapter number 10 and verse number 13, Paul reminds us again of God's faithfulness. He says in verse 13, he says, There is no temptation taking you but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse number 24, he says this. He says, But faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. He says it in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3 and verse number 3. He says here, But the Lord is faithful. He shall establish you and keep you from evil. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 13. He says, If we believe not, Yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Let me tell you why Paul was able to finish faithfully. It's because God had been faithful in his life. And if you and I are going to finish faithful, I feel like preaching right here. God's been faithful to every single one of us yeah. in this building. And that's why we ought to be motivated to finish faithfully. God 
the second reason for being faithful. Paul had been faithful because God had been faithful, but Paul had been faithful because groceries had been furnished. Oh yeah. Chapter number 4 and verse number 19, Paul reminded the church of Philippi, he said, But my God shall supply all of your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What he was actually saying, he was speaking from experience that God had been faithful in supplying His need and God had never let him down even as a tent maker. And he laid himself out and the church's responsibility, he had been a blessing seeing these missionary journeys grow and God saving sinners and God provided every need that he had both physically and financially and materially speaking. And some of y'all in here this morning, God's been faithful to you too. He supplied every need you've got. Every one of our cupboards are full of groceries I guarantee you. this morning. My wife yesterday evening started cooking lunch for the day. Sometimes we go over skippies and get seafood, and I love their broad flounder. Man, that's some good stuff. But today, we're getting a special treat. And thank God for Pinterest. I love Pinterest. And I don't even look at it. I don't even know what Pinterest is, but thank God for it. My wife gets on there and gets all of these good de 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 desserts and, and things on there. And she makes them, and I'm telling you, that's just making my soup shrink even more. But anyway... She's got a big old lunch prepared at home. We got some pickled uh, cucumber salad in the refrigerator. It's got cucumbers and tomatoes and onions and all in a big old thing and got vinegar and some other stuff in there. And it's just, I'm telling you what, let's just all be dismissed in the Lord Christ, don't we? And she's got some other stuff, and I looked in the refrigerator this morning, and in there was a great big old some kind of whipped cream or Oreo cookies in it. I don't know if they call that mud pie or whatever it is. It looks good to me. And I'm thankful already that God put it in there. But you know, God's provided for every one of us. Every one of us. We've got houses to live in, shoes on our feet, clothes on our back. It's like the song says, God's provided every need. We ain't got a need for nothing. God's been good to every single one of us. And that's the reason we ought to be faithful until the end. It's because God's provided all of our needs. Another reason Paul had been faithful is not because God had been faithful. Groceries had been furnished, but grace had been found. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 6 through 10, y'all know the story where Paul was given a thorn in the flesh and he sought God three times to remove this thorn from his body. And God wouldn't do it. He said, listen, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. And Paul said, moreover, I will gladly therefore glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon thee. And we take a while Paul was able to be faithful and that little thorn in the flesh didn't get him knocked out of gear and get him pushed sideways causing him to throw his Bible down on the ground and kick the dust back to where it come from. I'll tell you why Paul didn't give up when they bound him with chains and fetters and throw him down in a dungeon. I'll tell you why Paul didn't give up when he was left Go ahead, and left for dead on the island of my left and my left. I'll tell you why Paul didn't quit when the popper bit him, when he was just trying to do a service and be a blessing to the other people of God. I'll tell you why Paul didn't quit when everybody else quit around him. Demas for Zookin, Alexander Coppersmith, Dunny Machiva. I'll tell you why Paul didn't quit when people backslid and got mad, stuck their nose up in the air at Paul and laid their hand he'll never be nothing. He don't even know God. I'll tell you why Paul didn't Go quit. Ahead, it's brother. because he had the grace. He had failed in it all. God's grace has been sufficient. And if you're going to finish this day out and be faithful, you better find the grace of God in your life. Because you're going to need it, friend. You're going to need it. Number four. Paul had been faithful not only because God had been faithful. Groceries had been furnished. Grace had been found. But Paul had been faithful because his goodness had been forgotten. Romans chapter 7 and verse 18, Paul says this. He said, I know in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. He said, I go to do good and evil is present. I go to do evil and good is present. That that I should do, I don't do. 
He said, there's a war in my members. And how to do that which is right, I find not. He was warned and he realized there wasn't nothing good about him. Listen, you know what would be good for all of us in here this morning? Yeah. Is to drop your stinking little halo and to quit thinking well, you're right on everything and you've got it all figured out and get over how good you think you are and just realize we're all nothing but a bunch of poor, wretched, miserable sinners and back to the grace of God, you'll never make it to the finish line until you forget about Because it ain't about you and it ain't about me. It's all about Him. Yeah. Church don't revolve around you and church don't revolve around me. Church revolves around Him. Yeah. The music don't revolve around Sue and Sue don't revolve around music. Even though she's a blessing and she's great, thank God for it, the music revolves around God. Yeah. Yeah. The choir don't revolve around God and all this stuff. God is the focus point. And listen, our message, everything about us is about Him. It's not about how good we are. It's about how good God's been to every one of us. There's nothing good about none of us. The shame is sometimes our ugly pops its head. Yeah. Of course it does. That's just proof again that it's not about you. Look at your neighbor and say it ain't about you, it's about him. Look at your neighbor. It ain't about you, it's about him. It ain't about you, it's about him. Paul had got to the end of himself and he said, it ain't about me, it's about him. That's a reason for being faithful. The reality of being faithful, let's go back to 2 Timothy 4 and verse number 7. The reality. Paul and in all reality had been faithful. And here's the reality according to verse number 7. I wrote these down this morning. The reality is being faithful to the finish. Don't come without some wars. Look at verse 7. I have fought. Are y'all with me? Everybody take a deep breath. I just told you it ain't going to be easy. If you're going to be faithful to the end of this thing and the end of your journey and the end of your course, it ain't going to come without a few battles. And who knows in what way they're coming? Spiritual? Yes, sir. Marital? Kids? Money? Whatever it comes, it's going to come. And you're not, but you're going to have to be faithful. Yeah. Being faithful to the finish, it don't come without some wars. Paul said, I fought. Yeah. Message this, are you willing to fight to the end? Come on, Brady. That's good. That's good, Pastor. That's You're good. going to have to battle some things in your life to be faithful to God. Yes, you Amen. are. Yes, you are. It's hard being faithful to God. It ain't always easy. You're, right. You're going to have to get in some battles, and it ain't going to be easy. There's no, listen, you are not going to finish this thing without some. You're right. That's true, yeah. Pastor. Brother Ron, you're going to have some battles to fight. Just keep being faithful. Paul said, I fought. In other words, he didn't quit. When the going got tough, he kept on going with it. He was going to stick in there. He's struggling, no doubt. When you're fighting, you're struggling. He says, I'm in a war. I'm in a battle. But I'm going to keep it on, keep it on. There's going to be some struggles, some battles, yes, some are. wars, some explosions to come in your life. <laughs> what are you going to do when the battle comes? Are you going to retreat? Or are you going to be like a good soldier and stand and have done all stand? What's this? The reality of it is, we're talking about the reality of faithfulness, verse 7. The reality of being faithful is that it don't come without some wars, but it don't come without some wounds. Watch. I have fought a good fight. You ever seen anybody in a fight that didn't get wounded? Huh? Yeah. How many of y'all have been wounded? Sure. Everybody in here. I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking about spiritual. It don't hurt. It don't feel good. I had physical wounds, Brother Shane. 
that healed a whole lot quicker than spiritual wounds. Yes, sir. You're right. It hurts getting wounded. Especially when all you're trying to do is be faithful. Amen. And it don't feel good. But, but there's going to be some wounds to come. It's coming. Jesus even said this. He was wounded by his own friends. Sometimes those wounds come from work. Might come from a wife. It could come from a spouse, a, a brother, a sister. It could come from a cousin. You say, preacher, what am I going to do? I'm wounded! Paul said he kept on fighting. Yeah. Right. If you're going to finish faithful and be faithful to the finish, even when the battles are raging and you're bruised and you're beat up and it looks like you're going to get beat, just keep on a walking and go over to God. Keep on fighting a good fight of faith. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Some of y'all people say, preacher, I just feel like giving up. You do, you'll never finish. The ones that finish the battle are not those that fight the best. And just because somebody finishes the battle or finishes their fight and their course, it don't mean that they was never knocked down. It means that they just kept on getting back up. Yeah. That's good, preacher. That's good. Never seen anybody in a fight where it didn't end up eventually on the ground and wallowing around. You don't stand up and fight all the time. Sometimes you're on the ground. I remember Shane... I could handle that little booger several years ago. We was in a motel out yonder on a mission thing doing a Bible school out west. And then Shane was in a motel room. And uh, I woke up, well, me and him been rational. Now, as long as I could stay on my feet, I could handle it. No problem. But it's hard to stay on your feet when you've got somebody three foot shorter than you. <laughs> <laughs> and when he got me on the bed or on the ground, I was over. He had me. Little rascal. I don't know if he used to wrestle. He would have been WWF. Yeah. I know those guys are a lot bigger. They'd probably laugh at him when we come up there. But I guarantee you he'd crawl up their leg and lick his sleep and pop him in the nose. That's for sure. <laughs> Man, he might have started on top. He might have started standing up. But we'd end up on the ground every time. He'd have me in some kind of leg block. All kinds of twisted Japanese moves, I guess he learned. He must have saved the Holiday Inn Express before he went with me and learned all that stuff. I don't know. But anyhow, he'd get me down. That's the way it is sometimes in spiritual warfare. We get down, we get wounded from the wars. But listen, friend, if you're going to be faithful to the finish, there's going to be some wars and there's going to be some wounds. You're going to have some bad. You know what I found out? Before I got saved and before I started preaching, I was pretty much everybody's little buddy. Couldn't do no wrong unless I shot the dog or cat. I mean, it was a way for it. But isn't it amazing how after you get saved, the battles come? Yes, sir. Yeah. The wars, the bruises, and the hurt, and the pain. I've got to move on. Watch this. According to verse number 7, the reality of being faithful to the finish don't come without wars, it don't come without wounds, but watch it don't come without wrongs. Notice he said, I have fought a good fight. So he didn't say, I fought a perfect fight, he said, I fought a good one. So you know what that means? If he didn't fight a perfect fight, that means he made some mistakes. Huh? Are y'all with me? We all make mistakes, do we not? Guilty. I've been sometimes one of the world's white worse, and honey, do you better not say amen right there. But they some mistakes. Let me say some mistakes I didn't make. It wasn't a mistake when I asked Jesus to save me. And it wasn't a mistake when I asked Melissa to marry me. And it wasn't a mistake when I had two young ones. Amen. Now she might think otherwise it was a mistake when she married me. Just don't mention it public, okay? Paul said he fought a good fight. It wasn't a perfect fight. So that means he made some mistakes. We all made mistakes, every one of us. He didn't say he fought a perfect fight, just fight a good fight. In other words,
words. If you do something wrong, admit it. Yes. That's one of the hardest things. If you do something you know you shouldn't have done, you get forgiveness for it, say I'm sorry, and you go on. Ain't nobody perfect. I mean, my goodness, we all make mistakes. It's just hard for us to accept the fact that I might have made one. Because usually we see everybody else's wrongs, we just don't see our own. You're exactly right. Are you with me? We see everybody else's unfaithfulness, but we don't see our own unfaithfulness. Yeah. Let me say it again. We see everybody else's unfaithfulness, but we don't see our own unfaithfulness. You're not going to be perfect. That's to tell us parents up too. Don't expect your kids to be perfect, man. I think sometimes we put so much on our kids that we expect them to be perfect. Sometimes I've been too hard on my young men. They're going to make some mistakes. I know they're going to make some mistakes. They've got their mama's blood in them. It's just going to happen. <laughs> I'm glad she's got hair already cooked. Right? <laughs> Good. No, I know my girls ain't going to be perfect. Don't expect them to be. Neither is yours. Amen. I'll tell you what, what we ought to do is make a commitment right now. I ain't going to expect your youngest to be perfect if you don't expect mine to be perfect. What about that? Do you? Huh? I won't expect your marriage to be perfect if you won't expect my marriage to be perfect. Is that a deal? Amen. Almost everybody. Well, you didn't say amen right like there. Now, I don't know. This is the first Sunday I've seen you in a while. You might need some preaching on this right here. Still got your wedding ring on. No, there is a cross. That means you're crucified. Right? He said he fought a good fight. That means he made some mistakes. He wasn't perfect. You know what? I've got to admit that I've made a lot of major mistakes as a preacher. Me too. I'm doing the very best I can. Somebody asked me the other day, Joe, what are you going to do about this? Preacher, what are we going to do about this? Preacher, what are we going to do about this? I don't know. I'm just trying to mind God. That's all I'm trying to do. Amen. Am I doing everything right? To the best of my ability. Trying to do right. Sometimes it's not to some, and it may end up not being right. And I'm going to try to find God if it's right or wrong. I'm going to try my best. I remember several years ago I made a mistake. At Stanford Church, that church I saw, Paul got us about 12, 14 years ago. I made other sense then, but this was a big one. I remember having to stand before the church, apologize. I said, how can I preach on open forgiveness if I don't stand up and admit I'm wrong too? Right. You know what it all boils down to is this? If everybody would help everybody be faithful to the finish, yeah. that would be a whole lot better. That would be good. <laughs> that would be good. If we just help one another be faithful to the finish, not get our feathers rough and get upset and mad and everything that don't go just right, and just help one another be faithful. Let's just be faithful to the finish. Because the end's a coming. It's a coming. It's a coming. And when the end comes, all that's going to matter is how you finish. And I don't want to be a hindrance to anybody not finishing right. I want to be an encourager and an exhorter to help you finish right and fight the good fight of faith. Got a lot of time with this in some of y'all. I ain't giving up on you now. You've got a lot of time to invest in you. Ain't quit. I'm going to do everything I can to help you finish right. Amen. What's this? The reality of being faithful. We're about to Y'all go home here and minute. The reality of being faithful is this. Finishing faithfully. Don't come without some wars. He said, I fought. It don't come without some wounds. He said, I fought a good fight. It don't come without some, what was that other day? Wrongs. Some wrongs. He said, I fought a good fight. Not a perfect, but a good one. But then it don't come without some worship. He said, I kept the faith. Huh? If you're going to finish right, you're going to have to learn how to worship. You're right, brother. If you're going to stay in this thing to the finish, you better be worshiping Him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
never finish without true worship in your heart toward the Lord. I believe that. Let me give you this last point now. Then we're going on. We've seen the reason for being faithful, the reality of being faithful, the results of being faithful. He said, I finished my course. There's a payday sum that comes. It might not be now. It might not come as quick as you want it, but there's a payday coming someday. Someday. Being faithful to the finish. A few things, watch this. Being faithful to the finish will help, first of all, our conscience. Let me say that again. Being faithful to the finish will help our conscience. Yes, sir. Let me say it again. I want you to get it. Being faithful to the finish will help our conscience. In other words, we're going to have some regrets, but I want to have as few as possible. We're going to have some areas that we're going to fail in, but I want to do my best to be faithful so I'll have a clear conscience in the end. I don't want to be at the end of my life and say, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah. I want to have a clear conscience in my mind that I'd love to be able to say, as Paul did, I followed the fight, I kept the faith, I finished my course. Yeah. That's good, Pat. I want to have a good conscience. Yes, sir. I'd hate to be laying down on my deathbed and say, man, I ain't been thankful. Why did I keep fighting? Why did I stick in there? That's good. Why did I give up? Why did I let the battle share me? Yeah. Why did I let the wounds drive me away? Why did I let because a few stray cause me to stray? Yeah. I don't want to lay in the day with that on my mind. I don't want to lay in the day with a clear conscience when I end this up. But I've been faithful to the best of my ability. Not perfect, but faithful. Being faithful to the finish will help our conscience. Watch this, it'll help our children. Yes, sir. Let me tell you one reason why I am where I am this morning. He's right over there. He's right over there. My dad is one reason why I am where I am. I look back at everything that our family has been through over the years. Some of y'all, I'm not saying we're the only ones that's been through anything. Some of y'all in here have been through a whole lot more than we have. But I'm using my family for an example. Let me just share a thing with you. Born illegitimately, May the 26th, 1943, to a mother who left him with his aunt at three years old and he remembered watching his mama drive off with another man. To have a neighbor in the community try to adopt him and his grandma would never take him back over to their house anymore because she didn't like the fact that that woman wanted this little illegitimate son. Got saved the, night, the July the 19th, 1970. Am I correct on that, Debbie? Yes, sir. At a little Baptist church down in Gravel in New Hope, North Carolina. I've seen things in the ministry happen to my dad that some of y'all would kill people over. Are y'all listening to me? Hey, some of y'all, if what happened to a preacher happened to you, you'd be killing somebody. I've seen that happen to my dad. Let me say that again. If some of y'all got in your, if people got in your face like I've seen them get in my daddy's face, you'd be in prison today. Had three kids. One of the cutest little boys ever been born. <laughs> Had two mean girls, and they stopped with me and said, We can't improve on that. That's enough. <laughs> Y'all know better than that. <laughs> Don't think I'm being full of pride, I'm thinking I'm cutting up. Because I'm not. I know I could be a whole lot better than I, than I am. I looked at my daddy. Daddy, I looked. Amen. It wasn't for him. It 
My real mama left in 1989. 89. 89. Did he stay right on? He ain't been perfect. Mm -hmm. He made some mistakes. You better believe it. He had a 17 year old boy. <coughs> During all that, he examined his faith. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't be where I am today, Mark. It wasn't for my kids. Amen. Amen. That's good. Because of God's truth. You want me to tell you one of the fires that's burning in my gut this morning? Is the fact that my daddy's been so faithful. Now, he might make a mess of this thing for it, so. He's a fire in me, Brother Don, that don't want to let my daddy down. I want to be faithful like my daddy. I don't want to feel his shoes. I can't. I'm not trying to. I'll never be the preacher my daddy is. I don't want to be. I just want to be faithful to the finish. Some of y'all wouldn't be here. It wasn't for the fact that you had a mom or a dad. Some of y'all grandparents. What do you think about them? You think about them was faithful to the finish. You might not see it right now, Don. <coughs> but it will. It'll make a difference. Amen. In the life of your kids. If there's one thing our children need to see today. See a faithful mom and daddy. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Let us sit in there to the end. Right. Yeah. yeah. To the finish. Yeah. Told a guy this week. He's been struggling. His wife ain't saved. She hates God and says she does. She's raised supposedly Catholic. I think people use that as a crutch so you leave them alone. And he's been in some trouble. I said, son, do you realize that if you don't stay faithful, your wife might never get saved, might die and go to hell? It might be your faithfulness. Did it not say that a man is won by the wife's chaste conversation, her faithfulness in Christ, so it also goes the other way? That's the word. 
I know I'm preaching a little long, and I know these ain't like padded pews, and I'm sorry. I'm just trying to do the best I can. Some of y'all ain't going to get a thing out of what I said. you just going to grumble about how hard the seats are. That's all right. I'm used to carnality. This is ain't too hard or cold in here. I ain't seen nobody. Yeah, I have seen one thing. <laughs> I'm right, in trouble again. Ain't got the air just right. <laughs> Think about my wife. Think about her this morning. 22 years we've been married. I'm a blessed man. I've got the greatest wife on the face of this earth. She's a good woman. She's quiet, even at home. We've had our blowouts, and I've let her win all of them because I knew better than to fight back. And I don't want to let my wife down. I don't. I want to be faithful. I was thinking this last two. Two results. The results, the results is being taken to the finish and help your children and to help your church. That's definitely. And to help your country. We talk about wanting to help America and help our county. What about our community? And help all of us. We say we want to make a difference in the world. Just be faithful. Just be faithful. Let's all stand. I'm going to pray. Let's say that you want to pray. There's a little piece of plywood up here if you want to pray. I know the floor is hard. I ain't going to beg you to, but if you'd like to come, there's a little thing to ship all up here. Come ask God to help you be faithful if you'd like to. If you don't, that's fine. We're going home. Daddy, Daddy, she got a bunch of kids watching you. Mamas, you got some youngins watching you too. That's right. Are you going to be faithful to the finish? Huh? Be trustworthy.